Lanarkshire, Scotland. All this land that marches back into the hills from Glasgow has traditionally supplied that great shipbuilding and engineering city with its raw materials, iron and steel, and coal. During 20 years between the two world wars, slump and changing markets closed down half Glasgow and half Lanarkshire with it. Worse still, as the main coal seams of the Clyde Basin began to be worked out, geologists showed that the reserves that were left were strictly limited. Lanarkshire had little coal in limestone measures below the true coal seams. Between 1926 and 1939, 566 Scottish pits and mines were closed. Between 1939 and the coming of the National Coal Board, the gates shut on 52 more. What is Lanarkshire's future under nationalisation? A plan of concentration is supported by the chairman of the Scottish division of the coal... ...are already nearly exhausted. That is not to say that there are no reserves of coal at all. In fact, these are estimated at 500 million tonnes. But the seams are getting thinner and thinner. And ice mining is difficult. For years, output has been dropping and dropping. Until now, more men are tied up extracting every ton of coal than anywhere else in Scotland. Well, coal may be scarce, but from a national point of view, miners are scarcer. And the country cannot afford to waste them scratching for coal in difficult places when they might be bumping up output where it's easier. We'll save every pit we can, but by the end of 1950, we aim to close 29 pits in the Scottish coal fields, 16 in Lanarkshire County, and to concentrate our main working in the central coal fields in the up-to-date pits, and above all, to make jobs for the miners who are so released in the new pits in other Scottish coal fields, where reserves of coal will last for centuries. Out in Ayrshire to the south, in the Lothians behind Edinburgh, and most of all, over the fourth in Fife, there is coal. Years and years of it. In large pits like Wellesley in Fife. In new pits like Rothes. 5,000 more men will be needed by 1950. In the end, in the new areas, there will be jobs going for over 11,000. The procedure is orderly and simple. First, the coal board calculates the vacancies in the new areas. Then it schedules certain pits in the old areas for closing in order to provide enough miners to fill the vacancies. Older miners, whom it would be unreasonable to expect to move, wherever possible, will not be asked to go to the new areas. They can be placed in other pits in the Lanarkshire area, within reach of their home. Everybody who agrees to make a move can, in this way, be sure of a new job. Since November 1948, at meetings and in consultative committees throughout central Scotland, union members and colliery officials have been coming together to discuss the plan. Well, Mr. Chairman, I think that at this point it's necessary that I should explain to this meeting the policy of the National Union of Mine Workers with regard to the question of concentration and reorganization of the Scottish Coalfield. The responsibility for the present plan is the Divisional Coal Board. They drew it up and they submitted it to us for our consideration. We accept the plan in principle, subject to our right to place before the board any alternative plan that any branch or fit consultative committee in the fits involved can submit to us. This we have done and will continue to do as we claim it is our duty to protect the interests of our member. What about the dewatering scheme in the 1944 report? Do you think that would help us at Thankerton at all? Well, so far as Thankerton is concerned, we are keeping the water in a controllable level at Thankerton. But as to what dewatering the whole county, well, that's an engineering problem. No one can defend the working of a pit that is in fact exhausted. We will never attempt to do that. But where workable reserves exist, we will demand that that pit should continue in production. We don't think that a pit or any pit should close where there are hundreds of thousands of tons of coal to be extracted. 
and we think it's a damn shame. And we think the government should step in here and do something about it. As a union, we are asking our branches and the pit consultative committees and the pits involved to send in to us their alternative plans. We will guarantee to discuss them with the Divisional Coal Board in order to try and hammer out some solution for the Lanarkshire mining industry and for the coal field in Scotland as a whole. But I want to warn you that if the board decides, having heard their objections, that they will proceed to close a colliery they were required to take full responsibility for their own actions. Backing up the request of their secretary, William Pearson, at the pits on the closure list, the union lodge committees are busy collecting information, checking their first-hand working experiences against plans and statistics, and discussing them with the colliery officials. At Fort Tissot and at Hill House Rig, the coal board was persuaded to put down boreholes to prove a seam which might be worked from a surface drift. When, despite this consultation, the closure of the existing pits was nevertheless announced, it came as a shock. One hasn't waited on the result of this borehole. They've closed the pit. Now, Fortisert and Hillhouse Rig have sent a 16-man inspection party across to Fife to look at conditions there. While the cases of individual pits are still under discussion, in some districts, the move out from Lanark to the developing coal fields begins. With the Scottish Department of Health behind it, the Coal Board is able to guarantee, within a reasonable time, a house to every married worker who agrees to be transferred. The old rows are disappearing. By 1951, the Scottish Special Housing Association expects to build 12,500 houses specially for miners. Of these, half will be for local men in the receiving areas and half for transferred people. The plan helps the new areas too. For these houses are over and above the normal ration the new areas can call on. Without the plan, there wouldn't be this extra 6,000 houses available for local people. And not only new houses, but new towns are planned. At Glenrothes, 6,000 acres have been designated for a town which, in the end, will house 30,000 people in country surroundings. They can keep their country surroundings. How about you get to see the football on Saturdays? Well, maybe you'll have to follow a new team. But when it comes to entertainment, Fife is second to none in Scotland. When a married miner agrees to be transferred, he will get free travel to the new area and a lodging allowance until a house is ready for his family. Extra four shillings. Don't go away, you know, you stay a call here. It isn't always easy to fit you into doing exactly what you're used to. But as soon as possible, every man will be given the chance to do his own job. Then, when all's ready, the board will pay the cost of fetching across his family and his furniture. Uh -huh. It is the government's responsibility to see that there are other industries in these areas besides mining. We don't want one industry towns anymore. And we do want miners to get the chance to mix with other folk. There are problems for those who stay as well as for those who move. But the difference between what has taken place in the past and now is the difference between plan and chaos. Lanarkshire must not again become a depressed area. But in the old coal fields, as in the new, what is happening is the plan change of Scotland's economy.